as always, just please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay? All right. So we have a huge, huge week this week in terms of what's happening in the market, data, and of course, the major, major, major announcement. The, it's probably one of the most anticipated Fed rate decisions in a long, long time. They've even nicknamed it the Fed uh, Fed session or something. I can't remember. I just heard it this morning. Um, but pretty much, if you've been living under a rock or you haven't been or not aware of what's happening in the markets this week, the Fed right, uh, the Fed is making a decision on whether they are increasing their rates. When I mean that, I'm talking about the U.S. Okay, they have not increased rates for nine years. So the big, big thing that's happening for the entire market is this, uh, what I'm just circling for you on my screen. So it happens on Thursday, uh, well, Thursday, Friday, four o'clock in the morning, if you're uh, in line in times with me, which is a S Sydney or Australian East, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So at 4am we will see if Miss Yellen uh, what she has to say and whether they expect a rate decision to to go our way or not to go our way. Okay so let's talk about a little bit about what this impacts on the market. It is the most spoken thing in the last two weeks and this week is no less. I'll, I'll try and paint a picture for you and pave what may take place so that you can decide how you're going to position yourself for this. Okay, so I'll start off with um, a recent survey of Bloomberg analysts revealed that 60% of, these are people that get paid to analyze the markets, that's their job, 60% of those said that they think that there will be an increase in rates, okay, whilst the other 40% said no. If you can see where I get my data from, this is a, just a, a screenshot from Forex Factory. They are expecting uh, an increase in rates. Now, the funny thing is that um, in the futures market already, um, probably about a 30% rate increase has been factored into the market already so it's not like everybody's jumped out and, and, and started to take action thinking that it's going to uh, that it's a formality okay so only 30% has been factored in and this is as of uh, an hour ago from the data that I receive um, but 60% think that there will be an increase in rates I guess if someone put a gun to my head and said Christian what do you think I get the feeling that they've got to pull the trigger, okay? Now, there's a number of factors that determine that decision, okay? First of all, from the last Fed meetings, they pretty much said that as soon as we can see, and when I say we, I'm talking about the US, as soon as we can see the job numbers, uh, the jobs are good and, and unemployment is, is healthy and it's all looking good on that front, we're ready to start increasing rates. Now, last uh, non-farm numbers that have come out just a, uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, pretty much said exactly that. Jobs have increased, unemployment is down to 5.1%, which is the five number is pretty much taken as uh, a number considered at full employment, okay? Because uh, you never ever get that number to zero, or I've never ever seen it, okay? So from that front, it's meeting all the criteria, so if the US lived in a little bubble, their own little bubble, and they weren't affected by anything else, it's a unanimous, they, they, w they should raise the rates, okay? However, the recent volatility in international equities, as well as other central banks like the ECB and, and major banks are, are globally, they have taken on a dovish nature, meaning that they're not really interested in increasing their rates at this stage. All of that affects the decision, okay? So this is going to be a, a close one. And if you're going to trade this, the best way to trade uh, such a movement, I'll explain to you how that works right now. What we may see at the start of the week, so today through till about Wednesday, is you may see 
the US dollar lose strength. Okay, I'm only talking about the USD. So we may see it lose strength, and that's from the people who are thinking, what about if this announcement does not go our way, I've already got uh, so much profit from what I'm doing and I want to cash out. So basically for them to cash out is they've got to release the positions so the US dollar can, t can you can see it lose strength. So for example, if we compare it to the Australian dollar and when I move over to the charts, you'll understand what I mean a bit better. You may see the Australian dollar spike up and then if the decision goes in the Fed's way, then it'll just sharply drop back down and this um, movement or this weakness in US dollar over the first three days is simply people not willing to take what they've already got in their pocket they want to keep it and they don't want to ride that against a major major announcement all right so does that make sense to everybody so you may see dollar US dollar weaken in the first three days of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we may see some weakness. And then pretty much Thursday is going to be, you, you might see a very rangy day, very flat until the major, the major announcement, and then it'll just explode. Probably in both directions initially until the market interprets in, in, in information as to what's actually happened, okay? The other major thing that we should be aware of for this particular week is that there is also We've also got other um, other monetary policies from other central banks around the globe. Mainly the one that's going to affect us the most is probably going to be the uh, Japanese monetary uh, policy statement and also, also the Aussie dollar, um, which happens tomorrow. Okay, now the We've never seen an Australian uh, policy meetings to be so drastic that it absolutely moves the market very, very wild. So I, I haven't seen it yet, not to say that it can't happen, okay? However, with the Japanese, I've seen it many, many times that they come out and they say something and the, and the market really moves violently, okay? We saw a little glimpse of it, I think, last week. Um, and basically what happened was that all they made a comment was that Japan may be looking at increasing their quantitative easy, easing program because of the, the China thing that's happening and, and they may need to stimulate their economy a little bit more. So what we may see, okay, so if anybody trades a US yen, all right, the US yen will be a bit tricky this week. If tomorrow we get Japanese um, policy statement, if they say we are increasing our quantitative easing program, you, you will see that the yen lose strength very, very quickly, like quick movements. In, in a short period of time. Even if, even if they hint at, at a weakness or, or increasing their QE program, and if you're trading the US Yen, for example, the USD JPY, we already know or we think that the US, from the US side, we're gonna get weakness towards the start of the week. If tomorrow we get this double up um, this increase in, you may actually see this go up instead of down, okay? So if you see that, that's what it's related to, okay? All right, so so those are the, the big, big things. You know, I, I can't recall a more anticipated uh, FOMC statement. Um, the U.S. has not increased their rates for nine years, nearly a decade, and it's very expected that it, it that it could happen you know if i was to if none of the equity things that happened and the china thing that happened in the last month and a, and a half had occurred this would have been an easy one it wouldn't have even moved the market too much because everybody would have expected it but this one's 60 percent yes 40 percent no that's the information as i know it the other things to look out for in terms of raw data uh, any gbp traders um, last week, the GBP um, handed in some weak data, and we saw a pullback on, on um, or some, sorry, they made comments regarding weak data, um, that they weren't too fussed about it, and everything was on track, and so they took on a very relaxed tone, 
which brought back confidence to the GBP and the GBP rallied last week. Okay, um, what's going to be interesting this week is that they get their employment change numbers over here. So if that does not hit the mark, then we could see the GBP collapse again and and continue in that downtrend. All right. So everybody, that's what's actually taken place. The only last comment actually, which is actually an important one Kiwi dollar Kiwi dropped their rates last week and we saw a big gap in the market and we, we did pencil out the Kiwi dollar as one of the fast movers or the ones to look out for last week and indeed it was um, and they hit the market with another rate cut and they took it further saying that um, it's not over. If the, if things don't improve, they're not afraid of cutting rates again. All right, which basically means with the Fed decision, we could see the Kiwi dollar go into record lows um, and and really really fall off off the mark. Okay, so those are the things that we got to look out for. So when it's under so much pressure, this uh, GDP uh, figure here comes into play significantly. Okay. Everybody take note of these times. As always, these times are in my local, which is Australian Eastern Standard. Um, these are the highlights for the week. None bigger than Friday morning, 4 a.m. If you want to see the market move, I suggest wake up and watch it. You don't, I'm not saying to trade it. Just wake up and watch it, and you will see fast, fast movements. Okay, let's get our charts going. Let's incorporate our fundamentals and let's see what we can uh, see for ourselves for this week. All right, let us start off with the Aussie dollar. Okay, now remember last week when we were looking at the Aussie dollar, I said, I just got this feeling that we might get this pullback in towards that 71, 72 region. We hit 71 and we've hit it this morning. Um, I still haven't seen a, seen a good trade opportunity. Now, I'm leaning towards an increase in the Fed rates. So I'm not really too interested in buying dollar. Not yet, at least not this week until after I hit that de decision. If if they do not increase rates, we could see the dollar continue further up. Okay? China put out some decent numbers over the weekend which has given us the strength and we've had a couple of nice rallying days but I haven't seen a trade opportunity yet I'm starting to see one right now can anybody uh, let me zoom in on my chart can anybody see what I'm basically uh, seeing we're in definitely in a trend down okay and I'm starting to get towards a pullback um, I thought that I might get the inside candle set up out of these two but we broke to the top side so that took that out of the equation so what I'm actually looking for is if we do get a candle kind of like this and then I follow it up like that then I'm ready to take that trade down now one thing that I will say when there is so much fundamental news and when it's so anticipated and it carries so much participation okay let me just put it this way there are sports betting companies, okay, that actually allow you to bet on whether they you feel that the Fed Reserve will increase rates or not increase rates. So what I'm trying to say by that statement is the following. It attracts much more participants than normal, okay? Every company, exporter, governments are starting to hedge their positions because they're worried, they don't want to be exposed. So if you're going to hedge a position, it simply means you've got to participate into the market. Now when it, there is something so anticipated, the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of our technicals can fail. Okay, so if you don't have the stomach for it, perhaps this week is not the best week for you to trade on technicals. I don't mind. I'll, I'll chance it, but I'm just letting you know up front so that you understand what the risks are involved. When, when there's hype and euphoria, the technicals tend to go a little bit out the window, or at least they don't stand the normal ground. In any case, I'll still be looking for this trade that I've just drawn on the charts for you. So I'm hoping we get a nice 
candle up a nice inside candle if it's if this all happens close to my 50 SMA it makes me even happier and then I'll look for that short sell on the break it's the only thing I can see on the Aussie dollar let me have a quick look on my four hour chart No, I'll just have to stay on that one. So for the Aussie dollar, what I'm looking for, let me just draw it. Let's see if I can, if it, hopefully it can happen. I'd like it to get to that level somewhere and find a setup. And that's just going to remind me what I'm looking for. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do Aussie dollar this week. Um, did anybody trade Aussie dollar during the week? The only trade that you possibly could have taken based on what we do on a Monday is this is a reversal pattern the three candle sequence there so um, in that direction did anybody take that trade that's the only one so it would have been a counter trend trade and you see in a reversal there was there was nothing here saying that this was the floor so it would have been a, a lower probability type trade let me just have a look at that question. What trend line is that? Oh, this this line here. This is no trend line, um, Seneca. This is just me drawing on my chart so that I remember what I'm looking for. Okay. So what I want to happen is to get the two candles set up like that so that I can go back down. So I'm just putting a line. This just reminds me. Oh, the blue one. The blue one is a 50 simple moving average. Okay. This is a 50 SMA. It's on all my charts. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's have a look at the Euro USD. Okay. I was hoping that this was going to come and give us some activity here last week, but it didn't happen. It's moved away in the opposite direction. So we, we haven't taken a trade. Let me just see. One, two, three, four, five. I've got six consecutive days. Not enough to take a trade yet. Um, has anybody got a trade on the Euro USD on anything um, based on another strategy, based on just pattern trading? supports, lines, fibs, etc. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. What I would be looking for, but this is not going to happen for a while, this is going to take a little bit longer to play out, is I would think this would come to some level there and then start to um, to play this one in so that, and then just break away in either direction. But this has got at least two weeks before that happens because I'm on a daily chart. Um, okay, anything that you can do, you've got to wait two more days. If we try and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If today, if today's candle remains a blue candle, okay, tomorrow you can take a short on that. Okay, what I might do is I might actually do a session where I teach you that method. Um, I, we traded it last week. It doesn't come up very often though, so it's not really worth an entire class dedicated to it. But I'll, I'll make a little space and I'll show it to you. Okay, um, right now Euro USD, there's nothing there, nothing at all. So let's just leave it. Let's move on. Let's have a look at the GBP USD. We are inside a channel. Which channel is that? What time frame, Bajan? Oh, okay, this one here. Let's have a look. Okay, thank you. See, more eyes are better than one. 
Okay, so we're still we're inside a daily channel. Okay, I forgot about that one. All right, but I'm right in the middle of it. So right in the middle of it, I don't really want to uh, do anything. So I just got to wait it out until I get towards the edges. That's when I trade channels. I only trade on the edges. I don't trade through the middle of the channels. Okay, so it hasn't changed, but thank you for that. Let's uh, carry on. Let's have a look at GBPUSD. Okay, GBPUSD. Okay, I've drawn. All right. First of all, let's. Um, who took last week's trade? Can I just get a show of hands, please? And can I also get, can you just type in how many pips you took out of the trade? If if you did. Bijan, 300. All done. Anybody else? Oops. Got Alan, 280. Okay. Paul as well. Okay. Great. This is that was extremely extremely rare that we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive days in one direction. Okay, so we were we just took a statistical based trade that it's so rare that you get nine consecutive days in one direction, uh, and we took a trade in the other in the other way. Okay, and we made a huge move back up, and the market has rallied. It has now set up a great, great setup. Who can see the trade? What What's the trade that we got there? We got it. Yes, Bijan's got it. It's a short trade. Can someone give me an entry number? If we break the low, very good. Okay, so effectively we're kind of in a downtrend and it's pulled back so what we're banking on that we're going to continue down in this direction now what I love about this trade is that the risk level doesn't have to be a whole lot your entry will be at the break of this candle there your stop is going to be about there somewhere okay and this is our risk you can see that even to get to back here that's at least to me looks about 2.2 times as big as that there so there's plenty of room for the trade to work out and if we get the trade wrong well then we just get stopped out okay now where we can I'm going to place this trade right now what we need to be aware of is if this current candle which is today's candle and I doubt it but for some reason if this current candle one if it breaks the top of this one you got to go and cancel your order out that's the first thing but if it stays within these parameters all day then tomorrow you're going to get another inside candle over there and your entry will be based off the break of this one there does everybody understand that I just want to make sure that you understand it. So if the current candle stays within those parameters, then tomorrow it'll be off the break of the most recent one that's just gone by. All right, so let's spit out some numbers and let me line it up. Okay, so I've got a low there of about 53.99. So I'm going to enter at about 53.97. Give me a sec, I'm just writing this down. 53.97. And I've got a high on this candle here of 54.75, 54.75. So I'm going to put my stop at 54.85. I'm going to go 10 pips beyond that. All right. So my risk is about, let me just calculate that. Give me one second. It's about 88 pips, so then I've got to work out how much risk I want to take. Um, I'm just going to take a 0.1 position on this one, so here I go. So 
a little trick if you get your crosshair up on your um, on your chart and put it roughly guide yourself off the side axis here um, the level that you want to place your order at I want to get in at 53.97 so I'm close enough so I right click now a little menu comes up and give me one sec I just need to check what account I'm in yep accounts okay and here we go and you can do sell or buy and it will give you the level now if I do it I'm on one click trading at the moment so it's going to do a, a 0.4 trade I don't want to do that so I'm just going to have to do the old-fashioned way and click on new order okay so here I go pending order and I want to sell let me change this first point one I want to sell stop and I want to get in at 53 I said 97 I want to put my stop at 50 485 485 and I'm just going to put any target right now and I'll, and I'll fix it in one moment so 50 let's make it 5290 I'll fix it in one second let me place the trade okay you can see clearly from my chart right now that my entry is at the break right there of that candle I'm two pips lower than the low my stop is there I'm actually 10 pips higher than the, than the high and there's my target now let me fix my target I'm gonna make my target 2 to 1 so 88 so let me just measure out 88 make it 90 180 I'm just gonna do it visually I'm happy with that so it's about here done any questions now remember also about your magic one to one point if the trade goes if we get triggered and the trade gets to about here or there which is where that risk is the same as this distance that's your one to one point okay so you need to come up with a set of rules of what you want to do at the one-to-one -one, okay so if you want to close some of the trade if you want to move your stop or maybe you don't want to do anything but at least I want you to think about it okay um, so normally when I tweet out I will tweet out we just hit the one-to-one -one point and then you will have to do whatever action you want to do from that all right that's GBP USD so I've got a pending order in the market let's see if we get triggered gold okay gold broke out of that triangle right there very difficult to trade that one um, unless you traded off this candle right there which would have been oh, not a little bit early I don't think I would have been able to trade that I didn't trade this um, so did anybody trade this break by any chance any of you guys trade gold Pat did okay all right great um, if you were going to trade this probably the better trade you you would have probably you can see little inside candles right there on the pullback you could have got an entry to get that little movement down there all right um, let's see what we have now let me get rid of this because this is gone for me and let me go to a daily chart let's have a look Okay, the gold will be affected significantly by whatever happens on thir on Friday morning. Okay, um, especially what we may see if money if the U.S. dollar starts to weaken, we may see gold rise a little bit um, in the lead up 
to uh, to the decision. Okay, but I haven't seen much of a movement today at all. It's been quite flat. I know London hasn't opened yet, um, but I can't really see any trades for us on on gold right now. Oh, the only trade I can see. Okay, hang on. There's, there might be one here. Give me one second. Okay, here's a question. Let's just ask everybody in the room. Are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? And remember, we're, we are right here, right now. What do we think? Are we up or down or we're, in, or we're undecisive? Just give me your opinion. What do we think? Are we down, up, or in the middle? Okay, it's unanimous. Every single person said down. Okay, all right, well then we don't have a trade. I was going to do a, a counter trend trade. If I get a nice little inside candle over here, if I get a little setup right there, depending on what this candle ends up looking, I was going to try and take a little trade in that direction, but let's not do it. Okay, so no, nothing gold this week is, we'll leave it alone. All right, let's move on, US yen. Okay, US yen, last week we drew out a range where we thought the US yen might range in. And surprise, surprise, it stayed inside that range. However, I didn't get a single setup. Out of all that, I didn't get a single setup. So I wasn't able to, I didn't take a single trade on it. And this week, so let me get rid of that because I, I strongly think we're going to leave that range this week. And it's going to depend on what's happening you can see that the this is a daily chart by the way we can see the market starting to to thin out right and to, before anticipation there's just nothing on offer right here one moment I I honestly th feel that um, trading the US yen this week is purely trading a punt on what the decision is going to be. Okay, so I don't see it as uh, I I can't see anything technical on any trade right here right now. So. This is probably one of the, the nice, so if you're going to trade the decision, the US yen will be a little bit more gentle than other pairs for you. All right, uh, Not by much, but a little bit more gentle. Um, and I can't really see a, a single trade. I was looking at my charts this morning and there actually wasn't much available, which in, in the lead up to, to something uh, as big as this week, the markets start to go a little bit funny and they don't we don't we don't get as much um, trade setups and I mean that can happen at any time as well all right so US yen this week I don't have anything and the US yen is pretty much only going to be a trade that if you want to speculate on the decision all right okay let's move to the euro yen now the euro yen We've had a, a strong bounce this is like this is solid one two three four five. A solid days in reversal we're coming up to that top line what I would be interested uh, a lot of this movement was uh, based on the the Japanese yen um, coming out and and hinting at further uh, QE uh, stimulus all right. Also, the euro had a, a solid week, so it's bounced back up. So I, with this one, I don't want to force my hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait to see what happens up there. If I get the setup that I'm looking for, I'm happy to to trade that back down. Okay. But I don't want to rush it in right now. So with the euro yen, that uh, I do like uh, this point over here. That point is going to be around about. 
the 137.90, 138, depending on how far down the line it comes up. But this line is good. It's solid. I like it. Um, it could even... Give me one moment. No, no, I'll, I'll stick with that. So I'm going to wait for that to to see if it, if it comes up to me. If it doesn't come up to me, well, then I don't have a trade, and, and that's okay. I'll look for something else. All right. Let me just have a quick look at a different time frame. Let's see. There's just nothing. Let me see what this fib level is. No, right now, it would be silly for me to take a, a Euro-Yen trade. All right? I just can't justify it. So I'm going to wait to see if I come up to this region over here. All right? All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at the Kiwi dollar. Kiwi dollar had the interest rate cut last week and left this gap in the market which still has not been closed there's heaps of gaps in this in the in the Kiwi in dollar um, this is just for anybody who's a gap trader there's still a gap up there and there's another one up there all right so this is why we shouldn't get stubborn uh, the theory is that the market always comes back and closes the gap up it may it may take three years so and you might blow up 500 accounts in in the process of doing that so don't get stubborn with it there was a, a good gap left in the market last week and it looked to me that the market was trying really hard to come out and fight it you can see that it's pushing and pushing but it just has not happened um, so this one's going to be tricky I get the feeling that if, if we do get the right increase this is just going to turn around and start making more history with lower lows uh, that it's seen in, in a long, long time. Let's have a quick look at a weekly chart so we can see what we're talking about. That's a weekly chart. All right, so the last time that we're talking about 2001, that the last time that the Kiwi dollar was in this range. Okay, so it was a long, long time ago um, because one of the major things when a currency hasn't traded in that area for such a long time it usually means that there's not many orders so because people put in buys and things like that so there's not many orders there at all so it's kind of like think of if you're digging a hole through the through through the ground all right and then all of a sudden here you hit a air pocket a rock air pocket and then there's nothing to catch you and it just drops down to another level all right that's what the kiwi dollar feels like at the moment all right so i have no interest in buying kiwi dollar if anything i'm looking for see if i can get a good setup on the on on the sell side and because of let me zoom in a bit bigger so i can see it a bit better i was looking for sells all last week and I thought we were going to get one through here, but I didn't. Then we got the gap. It spoiled all the charts, and I got nothing. All right, so I have to patiently wait until I see something new on it. Okay. All right. Um, even on a four-hour chart, there's not nothing, nothing happening. There's sometimes people like to trade this. All right, I'll show it to you because of a lack of things to trade. Sometimes people like to trade this wedge with a gap. All right. Uh, you would trade it just the way as you trade anything else. We'd probably have to get, drop down a time division to see it better. Okay, so this is probably how you would try. I'm on a one hour chart now, so I've really stepped into it. And we could probably draw it, I'm just tidying it up a little bit, about there. You may get, it's a counter trend trade, you may get one little go at it that direction. But the one that I'm more interested in is the one that closes down here and then go bang, and you hit it this direction. 
Okay, so it's a rising wedge with a gap. Um, we might break out of this uh, during this session coming up right now. All right. Other than that, I have absolutely nothing for you on the Kiwi dollar. All right. Let's look at the final one, Euro Aussie. I think during last Thursday's class we got a setup. Remember? Oh, sorry. Give me one sec. We we drew out this area that we thought it was going to consolidate in. It did. It stayed within there. So that means that we were looking for opportunities on those fringes to trade in up and down. Last Thursday during our class, we saw this setup over here. And did anybody take that one by any chance? So there was a trade there on the Euro Aussie or, or we worked out that there wasn't enough room. I can't remember, but I remember mentioning it. I don't know if anybody took it. Um, okay, this week, we're still there. And this is one of those that spiked up like crazy that day. And it's just doing this. All right. I can't find the trade in here, guys. So Euro Aussie is one that until it settles down, probably just stay away from. Okay. All right. Let me review everything. If you have a question, please type it in and I'll answer it for you now. Um, it can be off topic, it doesn't really matter. If you have a question, just let me know and let's see what we can do. Aussie dollar, we're waiting for see for some kind of a bounce and see if we can get an inside candle set up to take us back down. All right. Euro USD, we're trading in a channel, but we're right in the middle of the channel, so until we get to the fringes, we will do nothing. Okay. GBP USD, we've placed the order in the market. Just be alert if we break that top there, you've got to go back and cancel your order out. And we're hoping that we get triggered in this direction. Gold, we said we're in a downtrend, so we're not going to look at that counter trend trade. US yen. We're just going to, it's a speculation this week, so we're doing nothing. Euro Yen, we're going to wait to see if we can bounce off that resistance line. Kiwi Dollar, we got that one hour rising wedge. We'll see what happens with it. And Euro Aussie, finally, we're in no man's land, so we're doing nothing. So basically this week, we've just got one pending order in the market. Let me see these questions. Okay, first one. Was the target for the GBP, what was the target? Two to one target is what I look for. I've set mine to 52.20. Okay, so generally I like to go for two to one. And I remember when you get, if, if we get to one to one, uh, just make sure that you take some kind of action on that. Okay, US Yen, there is, is there an inside bar and a fractal short? Let me just have a look. US yen. Okay. All right. There is. There is. So basically, the the question is: Is that a setup? And we've just broken to go short. Well, technically there is. However, oh, I don't, because of this huge candle in this direction I don't really know if I'm in a downtrend so when you get something so big it, it spoils all your indicators so all that my brain can see right now is a sideways market okay so am I willing to trade that in a sideways market if you are the setup is correct okay so does that answer your question wrong fantastic okay so there is an inside candle uh, but I'm just in congestion that's the only reason why I it didn't interest in me too much okay uh, Romy is it okay got it I think you must have done a typo when you've typed in your name okay uh, any other questions
it's ex it's an exciting week for FX. Um, don't go crazy. Just make sure that you uh, limit your your trades and and understand your risk levels before you do anything. Um, this week we'll have a look. Um, I'm not sure what we'll have a look at, but I'll dig something out. All right. Um, if you have any questions, uh, keep sending your emails like you have been. If I've got a, I've got a, quite a few emails with resistance lines and support lines relating to last week's class, just for clarification. So always happy to to have a look at those for you. Um, other than that, I think we'll call it a day. Uh, it's a week that really hasn't showed us much, and which is quite normal for such a a big anticipation to a, a major um, occurrence that's about to happen in the market. Okay, other than that, have a fantastic week. I'll see you all on Thursday at 3:30 as usual. Bye for now.